Welcome everyone to the RPG Goblin. I am your host Willow and I am the resident goblin and the one who asks all the questions because I'm obsessed with these games and I'm just, I, I talk too much and I need an outlet and so this is the outlet. And <laughs> in today's episode we are going to be talking about a solo map making game that is coming to Kickstarter uh, February 6th called Cartograph. Now I'm very excited about this and to um, talk about this game with us we have on the designer and the creator brandon lee to talk all about it with us and uh brandon if you would like to um take the stage and tell everyone who you are um you know what you do where they can find you and all of that fun stuff uh go ahead yeah hi um i'm brandon lee i am the uh, designer behind cartograph and i work for a company that my wife and i run called the ravens ridge emporium um and we started out making like uh TTRPG dice and, and mm -hmm. accessories and that kind of stuff. And we've since branched into doing other stuff. And me, <laughs> uh, I've been designing a lot of games and stuff because I think that's what I really love doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've got a Kickstarter coming out on the 6th of February for uh, the Atlas edition of Carnograph, which is going to be really cool. I'm so excited for it. Um, yes, I am yeah, as and well. you, can, <laughs> you can find us on our socials. You can find us on uh, the ravensridgeemporium.com on like Instagram and Twitter and all of the socials. Yeah. <laughs> Every single one, which like, every you know, single one yeah and yeah. which all of those links will be in the description of this episode because it's always going to be hard to remember which ones and it'll just be easy for you to check it out in the description along with a link to the um kickstarter page as well for cartograph uh because i want you guys to actually be able to check it out and see what's going on there because it's going to be very exciting um and <laughs> so i think how i kind of want to start this off is i'm really curious um you know, there's a bunch of map making games and, and stuff out there. And I'm, I'm really curious why you decided to go for a map making game, especially one that's solo, because I actually don't think I've seen mm. too many that are specifically solo. So I'd yeah. love to hear about that. Um, so Cartograph kind of bore out of me doing like some campaign prep and I mm -hmm. was like coming up with a homebrew world and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I really want to love just sitting down and making a world map but I, I hate it. It's so hard. <laughs> I just hate, it's so hard. And like, I've seen like these, you know, videos on YouTube where the people will like throw dice or like, mm -hmm. you know, rice or grains mm -hmm. or something across a page and trace it to get your coastline. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I tried doing that and I was just so bored. So I was like, you yeah. know what? I would enjoy this if it was a game. Yeah, and gamify it, was, it. <laughs> gamify it. Exactly. And, and so it was during, uh, lockdown it was sort of and you know solo games definitely mm -hmm. became something i gravitated towards a lot during that because my group was sort of it was harder to sort of get sessions together in person mm -hmm. so i played a lot of solo games and i was like oh man i, I need to make this game because i don't want to like have to sit here and do this big map because it's really tedious and mm -hmm. i feel like it could be a cool tool and, and a cool way to explore like doing world building yeah um yeah, so, and, and my friend, um, Nicholas Rubinia from the Bardic Inquiry, you should totally check him out. He makes incredible games as well. Absolutely. Um, he sort of got me into uh, making games, and we, we did a jam together, a game mm -hmm. jam together. And he was like, you're actually not too bad at this. You should you should try and make a few <laughs> more games. It was like a one-page game, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I've had this idea for like a map-making game. And he sort of helped me through the first process of it all. And, and yeah, I just just needed a game to make maps so i made a game to make maps <laughs> absolutely that's so fun and i love that so much especially with it coming from a little bit of love from playing like some solo games too yeah um, and yeah. I, i'm curious of like how you even got introduced to solo games because it's been very recent at least for me in my ttrpg career that i've you know found out about solo games and that they actually exist and so i'm curious yeah. how you got introduced into them there's certainly like a, a pretty niche um, aspect of an already niche, <laughs> you know, <laughs> sort of games and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was also my friend, Nicholas, he, mm -hmm. he introduced me. So he, he was like already far down the rabbit hole of TTRPGs. <laughs> and I was at that point sort of only just branching away from 5e and playing mm -hmm. like Blades in the Dark and some Free League games and stuff. Oh, love um, <laughs> oh me too. So good. I love Free League. Um, but he was just sort of like, oh, you know, like your group isn't together or anything, you should totally try some solo games out. And mm -hmm. um, he had just written one called Grimoire. Um, and it's a fantastic game. You like play yeah. as a wizard, you're sort of creating Ooh. a Grimoire of spells. Really, yeah, really fun. I and I played that. that and I was like, oh, that's awesome. I really, really love this. And it, and it mm -hmm. sort of like harkened back to, I used to have um, this book series, like a Goosebump book series. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. ever heard of those. Yeah, um, yeah. They're like I love Goosebumps. children's horror novels. They're mm -hmm. so good. And there was like a series of like choose your own adventure ones that I was obsessed oh, with yeah. as a kid. 
Um, and, and I was like, oh, solo RPGs are just kind of like a better version of choose your own adventure. You don't need a group. You don't need to schedule things and organize it. You can just sit down and play some role playing games. So yeah, you can play like, on your own time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and you can just stop whenever you want. You're not going to disappoint mm -hmm. anybody. You don't need to do prep most of the time. Um, yeah. Unless you so, want to do prep for your own games, which I guess is its own fun. <laughs> Yeah, true. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of, Nick introduced me to um, solo RPGs and I really kind of, I got obsessed for a while with like solo RPGs that specifically like produce something that I could use in other games. Mm -hmm. So there's like a, um, a game called uh, Artifact and mm -hmm. uh, the same designer also made one called Bucket of Bolts. And in both oh, of those yeah, I've games, seen Bucket of Bolts. You've seen Bucket of Vaults? Yeah, yes. they're really, really clever design and they're really, really almost meditative, but they mm -hmm. really, they produce something that you can use in, a, in another game. So Artifact mm -hmm. um, has you playing from the perspective of like an, a magical weapon or Ooh, some other magical yeah. artifact. And, you know, throughout the eons, different, you know, adventurers will come you use you for like battles or whatever, or you know I maybe you get that. lost in a cave. It's mm -hmm. really cool, and by the end of it, you've got history of a magical item you can just drop into your setting. And I was like, that is yeah. so cool. You get to play a game and you get something out of it at the end. And and so I was just like, yeah, solo RPGs, yes. yeah, really cool. <laughs> something to show for it. Which I think uh, what what I love as well is when I was going over the press kit that you sent me, is that mm. not only is um, Cartograph. Uh, a solo rpg where you're you know making a map but you're also journaling along with it as well right yeah that's right yeah i love that so much because i've uh, like i've seen map making games and usually they're just to make the map you know there's not too much yeah. else going on where you're writing down you know the lore of the world as it's happening things like that so what gave you yeah. the idea to actually combine like the solo uh sorry the journaling aspect and the map making aspect together because i think that's really genius um, uh, it was definitely an idea I, I shamelessly stole from, oh, well, the idea of the journaling in a solo RPG stole. I didn't see any other map making games, but uh, there's a game called Thousand Year Old Vampire. Oh, loves it. Um, yep. Beautiful. Such a good game. <laughs> and, and, and like uh, the journaling aspect of that was just so brilliant and it was so simple mm -hmm. and it was such an evocative way to sort of get into the mind of your character. And, yeah. and it seemed like um, a great way especially if you enjoy creative writing mm -hmm. to play a solo RPG and then you get all of this documentation afterwards. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if you were the cartographer sent to go and explore this world and all that kind of stuff. And sure, you get a map at the end, which is mm -hmm. great. But if you have the journal as well, written from the perspective of your cartographer, your cartographer can be canon in, in your yeah. homebrew world, right? So, so I did a like cartograph session when I was sort of early prototyping it and stuff. And, and I had a group at that time that I was building this world for, and mm -hmm. I used cartograph to make the world map. And then I like tea stained some paper and I printed out the journal that I'd written throughout the game on it. And they found the artifact of the cartographer that had like so mapped the continent, like, you know, a hundred years ago or whatever. Uh -huh. And so it was just this really great, like, like I, I'm super love props as well in mm -hmm. playing games, you know, you hand Same. me a letter with a love seal it. on it and I'm absolutely <laughs> sold. It's so good. I, um, miss, so, I miss being like in person for games so yeah. bad because I love props. They're so fun fun right oh. it's so immersive too and you're getting this like letter written by the king or whatever mm -hmm. and you're just like you're absolutely there but yeah so the journal can serve the same purpose and i think it's a really cool way to sort of give your players a bit of a taste of the world building in your homebrew setting without just doing the dreaded law dump where you know yeah. you're just spilling all this information and one player is like zooming <laughs> out you can just be like here's a cool journal written by someone in the world and you can read it at your own leisure and you find out things and yeah so that's, that's... where the journaling aspect came from that's Gorgeous. I love that. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of um, journaling solo games so much. I mean, I have a uh, two uh, or sorry, seven murders till midnight. I keep wanting to say two past oh, yeah. midnight, which is a podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but seven murders till mi midnight is a fantastic one where you like journal as you're a investigator having to solve murders of a serial killer and like you yeah, have seven right. and all of that to like try and figure it out. And that's cool. One of my favorite things is the fact that you do have this physical item that you have at the end of the game. You complete it. You go through all of this story. And sometimes when you're playing a um, normal, you know, one GM and, and a bunch of players, if you're not a note taking player like or, or no yeah. one's taking notes, it's like there there's almost no record of that game. And I love I love taking notes. That's that's always my role as a player or even as a GM. I'm a, I'm a, yeah. I'm a chronic note taker. Um, <laughs> And because I love having that record. I love being able to be like, this is the game that we just played and I can look through it and see, you know, how it's changed over time. Yeah. And so I yeah. love that, you know, 
again, tying that in with the map making and even being able to write down, you know, you can create that lore in your head, but writing down maybe how your character is discovering these things and, and the lead up to it and what like happens and their thoughts around it, I think is really yeah. beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I think yeah. it's like a great way to sort of drop the world building into, like if you're going to use the artifact in a, in a another game, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like the, the difference between if you go into a library, you know, some fantasy library and you just sit down reading some history annals of like, oh, the wars that happened in this continent so mm -hmm. many years ago or whatever, that, no, like sure, a, DM, a good GM could spin that so that's interesting. But yeah. I feel like it'd be more common that it's as boring as hell you're sitting there reading <laughs> it'd be like reading a real history book that yeah. you're not really into but if you get like a first person perspective from some mm -hmm. of this world building and, and as well if you don't even have all of that being like a source of truth it's mm -hmm. just the perspective yes. of this character then you can get things that are like you know folklore or like mm -hmm. rumors or things that are just out like right lies that people have spread you know and, and it just makes the world feel more interesting and more alive because our real world is full of that kind of stuff oh and, yeah and, for sure know, <laughs> and a fantasy written... world wouldn't be any different of course yeah yeah and it, is, it is so hard as a as a gm to like consciously think about adding in lies and rumors and stuff like that into your oh, story because yeah. like at least for me when i um ran my first D, &D campaign and i like kind of went full head first into world building um yeah <laughs> i i wrote a lot of the story i wrote a lot of story and lore within different places and that was super fun but everything that i was writing down was a truth you know yeah. I, I was writing down what actually happened and it was while that was still fun it would be even more fun to have kind of more that creative um writing and creative freedom to be like okay you know i'm just writing this from this person's perspective and then when people actually go to that place we can actually see whether or not it's truth or, or yeah. whether or not it's a lie and you can even discover that in game versus saying that this is the absolute truth beforehand yeah absolutely and, and you know there's those are plot hooks in and of themselves that's mm -hmm. like zero work that you've done and now you've just got plot hooks that your players can follow like oh exactly. was this town really haunted by yeah. you know these ghosts or whatever and you can go and explore and find out yeah plot hooks is a great way to look at it like it, it is it's almost like um uh yeah it's i mean it is plot hooks it's just giving you a list of things that can interest a person like you know yeah, yeah that cartographer went and and found a city and maybe that city is now not there anymore you know what happened yeah. what happened <laughs> like was Absolutely. it a lie was it a hallucination was did it go missing why did it go like there can be so much yeah. that can go from that i love it absolutely yeah that's so cool and so um Man, this is just really, really awesome. Uh, but I, I am curious because you kind of started to go on, you know, talking about a cartographer, like, you know, uh, uh, exploring a new world. Is there kind mm. of like a, is there a like basic setting or any kind of like, like opening to the game that uh, you uh, have? Yeah. Uh, so Cartograph has actually been like released. It's up on my itch and on my website and it's been mm -hmm. up for like, uh, a year or something like that, mm -hmm. maybe a year and a half. Um, and it was kind of just always in this, like, it was nev never unfinished or anything like that, but it, I, I always sort of felt like I needed more feedback and everything to sort mm -hmm. of make it a proper game. Um, and it's really, really hard as an indie developer to get feedback and to get people to like review oh, yeah, game sure. and, and all that kind of stuff and play testing is is so hard so i spent <laughs> a lot of time play testing it myself but mm -hmm. i've had enough feedback now that i feel like i can sort of refine the game and one of the main points of feedback was like there needs to be a starting point in the yeah. game because it was kind of just like i had the cycle of play and you kind of just arrive on this continent and you just jump into like going to different locations exploring them mm -hmm. you know journaling all that kind of stuff um, so in the Atlas edition, which is kind of me finally collating all of the feedback <laughs> I've got and doing like a revised edition almost of Cartograph yeah, um, uh, and like, you know, doubling the content and all that kind of stuff. I've just been getting obsessed with writing all of these prompts and everything for it. But in, in that, so one of the main pieces of feedback I've addressed was like having that starting point. So now mm -hmm. there's a bit more of an involved character creation before it was just kind of like pick a name, pick some mm -hmm. pronouns, you know, uh, and then off you go. Um, but now there's like a bit more to it and you have like a, a background that sort of 
instantiates where you were from and why mm -hmm. you're actually going to this continent in the first yeah. place. So you might be going because you're, you know, a simple one, your cartographer company is like, we found this new island, we want you to go find, figure out what mm -hmm. it is, map it, all that kind of stuff for our catalogs. Or maybe someone you love has gone missing and has gone to this continent. So mm -hmm. your real, you know, motive is you're exploring this place to try and find them. Or maybe you're fleeing from something and all that kind of stuff. So now yeah. there's like a bit of a, a background that's grounded in the game and it gives you a starting point and it gives you a reason for going there. Um, I think that's definitely been a good one of the better improvements I've added to the game. So yeah, now now you have this starting point and now you have this <laughs> reason for actually going to this continent. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's that's really important because, you know, some of these solo games that I do um I do have and have played, you know, uh Over the Mountain is one that I've played. The whole start is that you've moved to a small town in the mountains. You know, that's the yeah. start. You're you're like starting new and so being able to have that point like okay this is where i'm starting i know you know i'm i'm here because yeah maybe my sister went missing and you want to try yeah. and find find her and that also adds an extra point of storytelling within your game as well because it's not just you know uh, 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 uh making the map it is also this other goal yeah yeah absolutely i, I wanted that to sort of be important in the game particularly mm -hmm. because i think if i just left it as like you're a cartographer with a name and, and you're just going to this place to map it out. It's sort of, it's moving away from role playing at that point. It's yeah. kind of becoming like a game book almost where you just yeah, have this yeah. procedure and you're doing some resource management and you're creating this map, but there's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of actual storytelling besides the world building. And I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, even board games can achieve some level of world building and stuff. Yeah. Um, so in order to sort of bring it back, make sure it's still a, a, a <laughs> TTRPG, uh, I think, you know, having those goals and all that kind of stuff allows you to flesh out the cartographer because at the end of the day, that's a person that you're playing and that's perspective that your journal is written from mm -hmm. and even the perspective that the map is drawn from. So mm -hmm. uh, coming back to all of those lies and, and those, you know, things that might not be half-truths, it's it makes the game so much more about the story that's being told rather than just purely world building. Exactly. World building for world building sakes, which can be yeah. fun. But totally, it's definitely absolutely. not everyone's cup of tea. And I, I mean, I can definitely resonate with wanting there to be a bit more of a drive to create the world. I mean, even part of my world building that I did for my game, I, I brought in like I, I made my uh, Pathion like super involved with it because I wanted to be able to tell some stories of why things were happening. And that yeah, for me yeah. was the easiest way to do that. But if you have a game that you can literally make the story out of, yeah, so cool. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really good. Just like I've been using it a lot as a tool when I want to mm -hmm. do a homebrew world and stuff too, because, you know, in Cartograph, if you go to a city, so the way it sort of plays out, you'll pick yeah, a location that you've sort of found that. on your map. <laughs> um, <laughs> And you'll go there and you draw like a card from a standard deck of playing cards. Mm -hmm. And then you consult a table and it will tell you, it give you a sort of like a vague prompt and it might just sort of say, you know, all the people in the city are missing. What do you mm -hmm. think has happened? What clues have been left to their disappearance or whatever? Yeah. And so you, in your journaling, you can also just like, if you want to go back and do some more hard world building about this setting that you're creating, you could just go into a Google Doc and just like go through your journal and be like, oh yeah, okay, so this is the city that had all these people missing. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a name. Let's like flesh mm -hmm. out what actually happened to it. Um, or you can just leave it as soft world built, you know, through yeah. the lens of your cartographer and stuff as well. But yeah, it's good to have that flexibility there and you know be able to world build it in the way that you like to world build i love it and so i actually would love to get a bit more into kind of the actual playing of the game you know what are the yeah. i guess steps of of playing you know from from beginning you know you're making a character clearly um yeah. and so the process of that is uh yeah i i guess the best thing basically is like let's go through the different processes of the game so you start with yeah, character sure. creation and how does that work a bit more in detail um, character creation is like pretty simple. You could probably mm -hmm. have a character done in like five, 10 minutes, something Love like it. that, I'd say. Uh, so it's really, really easy to jump in and create a character and you sort of just, uh, there's no um, roles for skill checks or anything in this mm -hmm. because it's just sort of, it's more of a procedural game. Yeah. Um, so there are like optional rules to do that if you're really hearkening for some <laughs> dice rolling for skill checks. Um, but yeah, so the main idea is you just come up with like a, a value and a disposition that sort of define your character a little bit loosely enough mm -hmm. for you to sort of know how to role play them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get like a specialization. So you might be a, a scientist cartographer or something yeah. like that that gives you a little Ooh. bit of a bonus. Um, so it's like a very, very light class system. You only get the one time bonus from picking it, but it's mm -hmm. you know, something flavorful you can use as well. And you just come up with a loose appearance. So 
character creation is really quick, really, really simple. And it sort of just gives you, it's more about like the, the words you would get. So you might get yeah. the value of like honesty and you might get the disposition of grumpy. So you're Ooh. a really grumpy person that, you know, really values <laughs> the, you know, honesty and being truthful and everything. And that yeah. sort of, I've found gives you enough for the type mm -hmm. of game that this is to sort of know how you're going to journal and how you're going to interact with the people you meet and all that kind of stuff. So that's yeah. sort of character creation. And then you sort of do um, a background uh, generation. So there's a few tables that you sort of roll mm -hmm. on to learn, you know, where you came from. Are you, are you looking for your sister or are you working for your cartography company uh, or whatever? Question, do you have these tables? Because yeah. it could potentially be fun to maybe just roll up some random things yeah. not, like during the show here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Hang on, let me bring it up. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, all righty. Do you have a dice? you want to do the honors? Uh, yeah, let me, I, I have some in the back here background do you want to let's do the background that i find that pretty fun all right so we're going to start by rolling the land that i came from was blank yet blank so roll me 2d6 all right the first one is a three the second one is also a three <laughs> okay so the land i come from was dangerous yet expansive so Ooh. just a couple of words you can think about when you're yeah. considering the type of place that your photographer came from so maybe because it was dangerous they're fleeing from something or yeah, they're know. fleeing and and that it was, you know, it could have been big too. Like it was just a yeah. lot of land. There's a lot of places and maybe maybe they wanted to find something more. They wanted to find something smaller, something that they could maybe make an impact to. Yeah, so, like yeah. Like the, there's some different way. Like I love, I love games that just give you prompts because it's so fun to try and interpret different ways. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's kind of like that little spark and then your brain sort of starts going like, oh, that could mean this and that yeah. could mean this. And, yeah. You start connecting the dots like, okay, this is Exactly. This... <laughs> <laughs> like one of those people that are like, you know, trying to find a serial killer and they've got that massive wall of yeah. all the like red threads. <laughs> I, 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 I so badly want to run like either a Basin or a Monster of the Week game with mm. having one of those boards that my players can like actively like, oh, pin together things. that would things. be great. That would be so much fun and- oh. Oh, yeah. It would work even better because in my Monster of the Week game right now, I have a flake, which is basically a conspiracy theorist. Like, it's oh, like, fantastic. Oh, no, everything connects together. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. What a good prop for that sort of I game. I know, right? My God. <sighs> Man, I want I'm so stealing mad. that idea. <laughs> yes, please do. Do it. <laughs> uh, it's all right. Beautiful. So I decided to leave because 1d6, please. I decided to leave because three again. <laughs> three again. Wow. Uh, I had saved enough coin to fund my dream of exploration. Ooh, yeah. Again, okay. it could maybe be even expansive wanting to go somewhere else where maybe they can thrive instead of like, yeah. somewhere where it's like they had to save coin. They had to try and like really work their way up and yeah. you know, go somewhere new. I'm feeling like the trope of like a person that's stuck in like a small town and they're sort of yeah. longing to go on adventure and all that kind of yes. stuff. Where they're stuck working on their parents' farm mm -hmm. or something. And so they've just been like whittling away, eating less food or something to pocket this like stockpile of money and they can finally afford like a ship out of there or something. Oh, I love that. That's really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm for that. <laughs> all right. And the very last table we got is, but I left behind. 1d6, but please. I left behind a three. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Is that Yahtzee yet? Wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, I left behind a problem undealt with. Ooh, that's fun. A problem undealt mm. with. I mean, that can just be so many different things. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one that pops in my mind is the family that they're yeah. running from in the hometown is like, we didn't want you to leave. And now they're mm -hmm. struggling because they've got one less person. Yeah, there especially with it being dangerous home. too. Maybe they, yeah. left behind, they left them behind somewhere that is dangerous. And yeah. So, yeah. Oh, and they didn't want him to go. Oh, now that's sad. <laughs> this is tragic backstory already. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> leave, it, leave it up to a TTRPG player to get a tragic yeah. backstory. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> oh man uh yeah so so that's sort of the background generation and then we just have like a opening scene so this mm -hmm. is sort of how you ended up in the new place did you want to should we roll on that oh yeah absolutely all right uh let's do 2d6 so this one is for the voyage to this new land but was by way of all right a four something other than a, a four three now. <laughs> okay i was preparing for the three and a two so you know on other okay. sides of the three. <laughs> yeah 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 
<laughs> so, my voyage to the new land was by way of Airborne Portal. Ooh, that's fun. Okay, Airborne Portal. Maybe it was an airship that had yeah. magical, like a magical teleportation system or something. Or like a what you could almost do even especially if you're going on kind of the narrative that they were wanting to like escape the small town and they were like mm. like you know trying to uh, scrape up this money and all of that you could maybe have it that they made a hot air balloon or something like maybe they tried oh, to create yeah. the thing to leave because yeah the other way that yeah would be absolutely <laughs> yeah i love that cool so so that's like character creation that's your opening scene and that's the premise for you going to this new place and, and that's kind of like the background stuff that you do no, we didn't do character creation but that's okay um <laughs> i mean we, we yeah. did we, we did but didn't <laughs> yeah we did but didn't we did the the thematic part of it not the mechanical part of it um <laughs> no i love and that then after i'm already that, invested <laughs> good see you look excellent this is perfect yeah um so now we've got our character. Mm -hmm. The next thing that you're sort of going to do is you're going to gather dice, and and cartograph is sort of built around this idea of a dice pool. Mm -hmm. So you just have d6s Ooh, yeah, that are in your dice pool, um, and they're separated into three different types. So you've got your landmark dice, you've mm -hmm. got your um, biome dice, and then mm -hmm. you've got a temporary dice. And mm -hmm. I usually just color code them, so I have like blue dice for landmark and yeah. white dice for biome or something. And then you have a blank piece of paper that's going to be your map. Uh, and the very first thing you sort of do is you roll your dice pool onto the page mm -hmm. and consult a table that'll tell you, oh yeah, a blue one means like a mountain or like, oh, a, yeah. you know, a white four means a city or something like so that. And so you mark out those, these places. Yeah, it's like bringing in those elements from those, uh, like, uh, I know what you mean from those videos that are like, you know, you you do all the rice or you do all the dice. Yeah. Dice and you just, yeah. like, it becomes different things. It, it's almost taking that inspiration from there and then on a smaller scale that's a bit more like oh you're not like spilling a hundred dice <laughs> yeah yeah that's right yeah it's sort of like the dice pool is representative of maybe um what your cartographer can see from their current vantage point or yeah. what locals have told them about and that sort of thing so they've kind of they've landed in this place and they've heard oh yeah there's like a mountain range to the mm -hmm. north and i can even see from this far away there's like a forest in the distance and yeah. there's a road leading to a town over here because of like a signpost or something and so now they have all of these places they've heard about or seen and then you're mm -hmm. going to pick one that you're going to go to so you might choose Ooh. to go to the town mm -hmm. um, and you mark that little dotted line on your map to know where you've been. Um, and yeah, so and then you draw a card from a, a standard deck of playing cards mm -hmm. and you consult a table depending on the location you are. So if I'm going to a forest, consult the forest table, draw a card, <laughs> and it will give me some kind of prompt. Um, it might, and usually they're sort of in the form of like a loose description and then a question. Mm -hmm. So if we do like uh, a forest. Yeah. If you want to give some examples of some of the props, pr not props, yeah. prompts. Um, I don't actually know if I have playing cards. I think I do. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, let's let's gamify recently. let's gamify the the podcast as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, it's an actual play now. Yeah, welcome everyone to the actual play. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we get here? We got uh, a queen of what is that? Spades, oh, that's a I think. gorgeous card. Clubs. These are the cards that are going to be for the deluxe edition Ooh. of the Kickstarter, too. Another little promo. How's that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. See, now it makes me want to get the deluxe edition because, I, <laughs> like, playing cards, I, I grew up playing a lot of, um, like, card games, so I'm always happy when playing cards are, like, involved in TTRPGs. Yeah. Like, even, like, specialized desks, or not desks, oh, my God, deck, decks. There we go. Yeah. Um, are always great because it's like they're just nice and pretty. And then like especially if it matches the game too, it's like, oh, this is my <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <map> set. <laughs> exactly. I really like in um how a lot of freely games use it for their initiative. I think yes. that's great. Oh my god, I love that. So fun. I feel yeah. like we could go on a whole thing about free league and it may never end. I love it. <laughs> no, I think so. I love I love their games so, so very much. <laughs> yeah, me too. Have you played Basin? I have not played Basin yet, which oh. is a crime. I say that every time because it is. <laughs> mm. Yeah, absolutely. We like, recently finished up our mini campaign of it, and it's ooh, brilliant. It's so what did good. you think? Okay, we're getting a little sidetracked, but it's fine. What did you think? I'm curious. Oh, <laughs> I loved it. Like, I, I've loved all the Free League games that I've mm -hmm. played, but it's just, um, I think Basin is my favorite of them. Yeah, it's, it's just, just gorgeous. Yeah, it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful book. It reminds me of, like, there was this old... Um, book series and they were like the ology books like dragonology or uh, egyptology yeah, I think do you ever I, see I've, those 
I, I may know what you're talking about. I don't know if it's 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 that for sure, but I, I used to go to the library a lot, and I, I think I saw a lot of those kinds of books. Yeah, like... yeah. They were sort of like targeted as children's books, I think, mm-hmm. but they had like a beautiful like watercolor art, and yeah. it always reminds me of Asin. Or like the Spiderwick Chronicles, if you've ever read those books. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> yeah. The, it's very, I don't know, the, the just the folklore of like Scandinavia is such a fantastic idea for a mm-hmm. setting anyway. And like it really Basin is. does it perfectly. And and just their art, and then like what they yeah. have, like the the bestiary in that book is one of my favorites that I've ever seen in any other game. Absolutely, it's just it's laid yeah. out so beautifully, and you get the gorgeous art, and then like even the way that the monsters work, I just adore. And yeah, the fact that it's not like actual like hit points too. I think yeah, it's nice, exactly. Nice the conditions that like over time, like they get angry, and then they start doing this, and then like yeah, oh, I love it. <laughs> It's so good, huh? It's so good. Well, I wish well, more games took that approach for monsters. Well, now I really. want to bring you on for Vason. That would be awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be so cool. Did Absolutely. You en- did you end up running it? Yeah, I did end up running it. Oh, well, it. Yeah. perfect then. I Okay, I mean, like, maybe unofficial official invite to come on to talk about basic yeah that'd be awesome. absolutely awesome. i'd be so keen for it all right i'm gonna write that down very quick uh <laughs> i love all right. it yeah all right the, what were we the, doing the prompts uh the prompts oh so, yeah <laughs> yeah 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 that's right yeah the prompts for so, the forest uh since that's kind of you know you you decide where you're gonna go let's say we go yep. to a forest uh what are some of the yeah. prompts there so this one says, so we've got the queen of clubs. So it's a lively and tranquil forest. The Ooh. calm breeze gives you a moment to relax. What view have you found the most impressive in this new land? So that's kind of the question that you can sort of instantiate your, your journal with. You might just sort of choose to answer that in, a, in mm-hmm. a journal entry as you're sitting in this tranquil forest or something like that. Or another one might be... Uh, it's uh, alpine and snowy. Thick sleet mm-hmm. covers the underbrush. What notable tracks do you spy in the snow? Where do they lead? Ooh. I really like solo games that give those, like, here's kind of what the, the thing is, and then a question. Because I think that's really yeah. fun. That I, I, those were a lot in uh, Dead Letter Society, which is a, a solo or two-player game about basically vampire pen pals. Ooh. And, like, it gives oh, cool. that same thing where it, like, describes what happens and then, like, asks you, like, these questions. And yeah. I think it's it's a great way to set some things up, give you something to work off of, and then, you know, actually, like, make it your own. And I, I'm yeah. curious for um, Cartograph, uh, is it meant for more of a fantasy-style world, or can it be used for other, other types of worlds as well? Um, it's definitely, like, fantasy mm-hmm. predominant. Um, so th- there's the assumption that some level of, like, mysticism or magic exists Mm -hmm. um but other than that it's like you could sort of run any kind of fantasy in it yeah but in the in the atlas edition i've included some rules and some guides on how you could hack it so i've sort of been toying around with the idea of like hacking this for a sci-fi setting where instead of like a you know a a non-foot cartographer you're in like a spaceship Mm -hmm. and you're sort of set out to go and explore some uncharted galaxy or something like that yeah uncharted Um, galaxies or even the planets themselves would be really awesome yeah Absolutely, yeah. So I think it's like the systems that are the core systems behind it. They're definitely able to facilitate like any kind of um, setting that you would want. Mm-hmm. But if you're doing anything other than fantasy, which is the main one included in the book, you're probably going to have to do a little bit of work tweaking some of the yeah. prompts and and that kind of thing. Which that would be fun because I I think that's a that's a fun thing that I like in the TTRPG space is that a lot of people like taking a base game and 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 playing around with it and making prompts and and stuff like that that do work for them. I mean D and D is a great example. A lot of people like yeah. to change that up and do and 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 you know do many different things in it. But um, absolutely, I think that's really fun with smaller games though because it would be like man, I would love to maybe like what would be really cool is maybe like try and um uh do, like explore like a a a ruined like cyberpunk city would be really Ooh, fun but like yeah. obviously that would be a much different setting than yeah <laughs> here's a forest <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah but, but i like, could totally see oh, someone cool. like doing that like making their own tables and then like i could even imagine from a game designer standpoint if you know, you create this game and you you launch it into the world. If someone came back and was like, "Here's a way that I I think would be a fun way to play it," and they're like, "Here's tables on how to do that," like that would be yeah. so fun and be like, "Oh man, you like the game that much?" 
<laughs> yeah, it'd be so humbling. Absolutely. It's it'd so be cool funny. if that, like, someone did that. Yeah. Not saying anybody should, but hey, if anybody wants to do that, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Change the setting and, and the tables and stuff. And, you know, we could, like, publish, like, a fan-made supplement for it. Yeah. Sort of How cool would that be? That would be really cool. Or you could even host, like, game jam type stuff where it's, like, here, make, oh, yeah. make your own tables to use for this game. And then, like, oh. yeah. I mean, hit, cool not idea. hit, that would be really <laughs> awesome, guys. Um. <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Man. Keep that in mind. That would be cool. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, I will. I will. I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah, and, and that's a great way to even bring in the community more on this too, because I think that's the best that's the best thing that like the indie game designers have is that you can work with the community. You're not big old wizards of the coast in their wizard yeah. tower and all of that. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can like communicate with them and you can you can work with them and be like, Hey, I want to create a supplement. What are ideas? Or even like yeah. the game game jam where it's like, hey, the winners can go into a supplement. Like that would be yeah. really awesome right absolutely yeah it's it's really nice sort of um in a lot of ways being this close to the community as a designer because mm -hmm. you just get so much like real human moments and, and yeah. like it's been so humbling like when i first sort of put cartograph i put it up on itch.io and i didn't really think much of it it was like for a game jam at the time and mm -hmm. then it started getting like a couple of comments of people being like ah, i played this and it was really cool and it was like such a touching yeah. moment and like having a conversation with someone and they were like showing me the you know the pictures of the map that they had drawn with the game and it just sort of dawned on me like oh. other human beings have this game and they're playing it that i made that is surreal <laughs> that is amazing oh i love that so much i, I just can't mm. even imagine how it feels because i haven't i haven't made a game yet but like mm. you know I, I i do run the podcast and I, I i get those same things where it's like people especially when people are like yeah i listen uh actually just yesterday i was um talking in like a group chat and my brother's boyfriend's like yeah i listen to your podcast when i'm at work oh, and it's like that's so nice like i i like it makes sense like like i know that he's a huge ttrpg nerd but then it's like wait someone like someone i know is like actually listening to my podcast listening yeah. to my show and like enjoys it like that's insane yeah. to me <laughs> absolutely it's such a nice moment isn't it yeah and then when it's like people outside even your circle where it's like hey i love your shows like, what are you talking about how did you even find it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> so I, oh, I, good. I can't imagine how especially because you know when you're playing when you're creating a game you are you are providing tools for people to have their own experiences to like create their own worlds within that game mm, and like you can mm. then experience that aftermath of like when people tell you like oh man I, I i found this thing in my game and it was so cool and this is the world that i made with it then i started a campaign yeah. like you could be the beginning of a like you could be the reason a campaign starts because they created yeah. a world that's amazing yeah that is surreal <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I hope I've done that for someone. That'd be so cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely con like, fantasy isn't usually my my thing, so that's definitely why I was asking about some of the other settings. But I I'm yeah. more than happy to like do some world building, even just for fantasy games to try out to give to other people. Like, hey, yeah, like to my brother if he wants to run some of the fantasy. Here you go, uh, take that. But yeah. I would be so down to create a map i i've wanted to do it uh i played the quiet year one time with a group of friends oh, and like which lovely game i love it but that's why again that journaling element did attract me because it's like we played that game and there was a lot of back and forth of like what we were doing in the game but no one was writing it down and so yeah. then it's like we created this whole world and it's like that would be really fun to play and but then it's like we only have the map to remember yeah even you in, have no documentation yeah and even in the quiet year they don't really want you to remember it because it's like yeah i think in some of the rules where it's like uh destroy the map <laughs> yeah 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 it's like oh it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> hold on it's kind of got that art piece vibe where it's sort of supposed to be immaterial mm -hmm. and, and not preserved um, yeah yeah Which but yeah that's the... it is it's such a good game have you played uh microscope 
I haven't played Microscope. I've heard really good things about it. It's been on mm. like my TTRPG wish list. It's like that's one that yeah. I want to try. Especially yeah. since isn't isn't that like I can't remember is, is it the one that basically you kind of can jump back and forth between different like eras of the world and yeah. kind of go yeah I love that. Yeah, that's right. And you do you do document in that, which is why <laughs> I like if I'm doing anything sort of world building and stuff, I like I like documentation too because mm-hmm. I, I want to sort of be able to go back and reference points and not just have to try and like remember oh was that king the guy that assassinated his brother or whatever yeah <laughs> um but in this you sort of like use the in microscope you get those little like what are they called study cards i think those little uh, like index cards index cards that's the one yeah. yeah 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 and so you sort of write all of this this history that everybody builds mm-hmm. and create like a timeline and it's um really really easy to access the information once you've sort of done the game yeah um so microscope is great definitely recommend playing it if you want to sort of do like some collaborative world building in a more liberal yeah. sense <laughs> I will definitely look into that further because that's again been pretty high on my list. Because it, again, world building games are just fun, and it is fun to just gamify it a bit and just be like, yeah. all right. And and that's why even like um, stars without numbers and worlds without numbers, I think, is also yeah. fun for that too because it, it provides all these tools for world building. And absolutely, I, just, I love it. And I, I'm curious if there's any specific games or or media or anything that has directly um, inspired Cardiograph, um, like. Mm. It, Especially with your like your love for world building, it seems. Especially like gamifying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, like, hmm, that's a good question. Definitely, my friend Nicholas, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> his games have been like a big influence. Especially like Grimoire, the one where you're mm-hmm. a wizard. Um, I definitely lifted some mechanics from that that I think, um, you know, indirectly served the the map making game in the way that mm-hmm. I wanted. But it, it, his his mechanics in there were really, really good. So he was a big inspiration. Yeah. And he really helped me throughout the design process of it all and stuff I like love that. that. Um, and like, I think movies like um, Atlantis, like the Disney's Atlantis yeah. and um, Treasure Planet, those are some of like my favorite films. I love films Treasure they, Planet. Oh my God. Oh, such a good movie. Such oh, a I want to movie. watch it. So underrated. <laughs> it yeah, <is>. same. <laughs> I used to watch it all the time as a kid. We had like little toys. Oh God, what's the... Oh no! It's been a while since I've watched it. What was the robot guy's like name? The little, oh, the robot guy. Oh, oh yeah, the little, little little guy too. Like little, little pink thing. Yeah, he's so cute. Morph. <laughs> yeah, morph. Oh, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good movie. But that was definitely like a massive mm-hmm. inspiration. Um, and those sort of movies where it's sort of about exploring mm-hmm. and going out to sort of uncharted territory and all that kind of stuff. Um, Gorgeous. I definitely was it. a big inspiration. And yeah, and like. Just all of those games that I sort of mentioned earlier that are sort of like the ones where you produce an artifact, Mm -hmm. that was just like something I really, really enjoyed. And I I sort of, there was only those few games that did it in a way that I really enjoyed, but I wanted there to be more of it because it was such a fantastic way to do prep for, you know, other sessions and all that kind of stuff. And and it just made world building like really, really engaging and fun. Not that I don't enjoy doing it the traditional way, but like (laughs) having those tools you know, like Bucket of Bolts and an Artifact. They're just such fantastic. Even like, you could use like the journal you write in um, Thousand Year Old Vampire. That's a fantastic big bad with a tragic backstory. Oh, for sure. You know, <laughs> and you've got his entire chronological history of uh, all of his memories that he's lost and everything. Like, ah, oh, so good. So yeah, all those sort of games, they're massive inspirations. I, I adore that. I love hearing what inspires uh, games and and people's ideas because I think that's always so fun because then you can kind of get what what like especially the like need that they're fulfilling with their own games because I think that's that's something I definitely see within a lot of game game designers is there is something that they want in a game there's something that they want yeah. fulfilled within the game space and it's not out there so it's like all right I'm gonna make my own it's like I want yeah. this specific. <laughs> type of map making thing. game one that has resource yeah. management one that has journaling one where you're going to come out with a final product that you can do something with i i adore yeah. that i love it yeah so cool <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> absolutely no i i am super super into it and so maybe a little bit um back on track from where we were uh mm. <laughs> which i believe <laughs> I hope that you guys are having a great time listening to this episode. I <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, we were talking just about um, pulling the prompts from the cards. You know, you oh you, yes, you you grab the prompts from the card. It, it, it establishes the scene, and then it introduce it. You know, introduces you a question, which the one yeah. with the lively forest. Um, 
I thought that was really pretty, especially with like what's the site that you see or or um, like that. And the the reason as well that I asked if it was meant for fantasy is because the, kind of my initial thought with that kind of uh, prompt is maybe like some really cool, almost like a um, reflection pool with like fairies and 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 yeah. like really gorgeous uh, fauna around with like trees and all of that. Because yeah. you know you you come to this new world, it's a new start. You went especially in in our narrative here you came from a place that was dangerous and where you kind of you know small town had to work your way up and like and then that being kind of the first thing that you see is this just gorgeous like pool of like crystal clear water and fairies and just all like almost like an enchanted forest type thing totally yeah (laughs) yeah absolutely i I try in, in the writing of the prompts i really wanted to sort of make sure that each one had like a a question at the end that would mm-hmm. not only like hopefully spark something for you to write into your journal, but um, directly gave you a question that you had to answer about the world. So yeah. every time you're answering a prompt, you're doing some level of world building. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, in the case of that enchanted forest one, uh, I think the question was um, what sites you see around you, what animals mm-hmm. you see around you. And, and that immediately is like, Oh, what animals are in this mm-hmm. land? Is it just true? Are there elks or are exactly. there like, you know, deers and that sort of thing? Or is there something alien here? Mm-hmm. Is it something that I've never seen before? Yeah. You um, could almost so I really those, tried to uh, do that. Deer Pokemon that like the different like seasons. Like, oh and stuff. yeah. Like, yeah. That yeah. Would be fun. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. See, immediately you're thinking of something that's like different that yeah. could exist there. And you're just like some mystical fantasy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love it. So you said fantasy is not your main cup of tea. What is your favorite sort of genre? Ooh, fun question. Um, So I, I definitely jump around a lot. Um, mm. I don't think there's anything that sticks out as like, this is my main, you know, I, I bread and butter, like this is what I love doing a, a bunch of. I I, yeah. I enjoy fantasy. I do enjoy fantasy when it's not like high fantasy, kind of the classic D&D, Lord of the Rings. Yeah. That's never been my jam. But yeah. I, I actually, I think um, there's a game out there called land of Eam, which I adore. Um, okay. And it's, it's actually not fully out yet, but soon hopefully um and basically the whole the whole thing is that it's lord of the rings combined with the muppets and it's it's like a whimsy it's like a whimsy goofy fantasy world where it's like you know like it's it's fantasy because like there's creatures that don't exist and 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 it has kind of some of those tropes but it's goofy and fun and Mm lighthearted and and whimsical and colorful and all of these things so i i'd say yeah that's definitely one of my favorite uh, types of genres is something that doesn't take itself fully seriously <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where, where it's yeah. whimsical and fun and, and all of that. Cause I, I think that definitely reflects with me. I, I don't like, like I love running drama and, and I like some of the more serious stuff, but I definitely am a very not serious person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I can enjoy myself some freely games and I love horror too. That's another one that really yeah. gets me. I, I, I do really appreciate horror. And even though I haven't played any, uh, too many proper horror TTRPGs, those are definitely ones that rank really high on my list of like the, even just yeah. the setting alone really gets me 10 candles. The fact that like there yeah. is these mysterious things that you don't know what they look like and it's dark and like all of this yeah. stuff. I love it. But yeah, yeah that's, that's for me. Now I'm curious for you. That back at you. What is, what is mm. your favorite genre? Oh, that's tricky. Uh, <laughs> I definitely also really like horror. Horror is really high up there for me too. Like one of my um, favorite role playing experiences ever was playing. It was a dread game oh, um, that I played. I want to play dread so oh, bad. <laughs> it is fantastic. I just I love the mechanism of the Jenga mm-hmm. tower and how it really kind of mimics that um, rise and tension and then mm-hmm. the sort of like lull that you sort of get before the final yeah. finale of the the horror movie or whatever your, oh, your analog is. But dread is great. So horror is definitely up there. And I and I really like. Um, like weird Mm sci-fi so like the dying earth genre is something Mm -hmm. i I super enjoy and like um even the sort of like science fantasy kind of like uh what's that game called ultraviolet grasslands if you've heard of oh i've never heard of grasslands yeah sci-fi's never been it's not that it's not something i enjoy it's just not something i've really dug into too much yeah myself so so i'm i'm pretty new to sci-fi <laughs> genres yeah and fair. Of the, the different stuff like that but i can definitely get behind some weird weird sci-fi like anything yeah. weird 
<laughs> strange, yeah. like, goofy, like uh, stuff in that area. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When you were talking about the, the Muppets in, in fantasy, it sort of reminded <laughs> me of um, like, you know, all of the stuff that Jim Henson has done, like the Labyrinth or the Dark Crystal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, have you played either of those adventure books, like the Dark Crystal, the Labyrinth one? I have not. I've seen the Labyrinth one, and I've really wanted to get that, because especially just the book looks so strange, too. Oh, and, like, yeah, I know that it, it does, like, comes right? with dice, and, like, so it, it's yeah. not one that I have yet, but I definitely plan on getting it, because I've I've heard... I've heard some things about it. I, 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 I want to know if they're good things, for sure, but... I, yeah. I, I, I just want it myself even if it's not a great game i just want it because it's a cool thing to have because i used to watch (laughs) labyrinth all the time as a kid me too and then yeah yeah, dark crystal i've only really watched one time but i I have seen that around and i've been definitely interested in that especially with like you know the puppets and things too like yeah that vibe still (laughs) absolutely yeah dark crystal is like one of the movies that gave me nightmares as a kid yeah puppets were so terrifying (laughs) (laughs) puppets are scary (laughs) They really are. They sort of fit in that weird category of like claymation and, and those yeah, sort of like yeah. weird things that just look slightly wrong. <laughs> yeah, it gives you that unca- uncanny valley where it's like, mm, yeah, it that's feels it. Feels strange. I don't know about this. Yeah. No, <laughs> exactly. I mean, all I'm hearing is that you got to run Land of Eam but horror and make the Muppets, instead of them being like more like, you know, whimsical and all of that, make them scary gym. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> that terrifying would actually be Muppets. really fun. And like, that's the thing. That's what I like about Land of Eam is that like it is like kind of the base setting is supposed to be lighthearted and goofy, but you can definitely go a bit serious if you want to. And like, it kind of right. gives you a little bit of that flexibility still within this world where it's like, hey, you know, uh, some of oh, it's got some of my favorite monster design as well, but I can't even remember some of the things. It's just weird things. <sighs> I, I I am I love it. kicking myself. Land of Eam. Yeah, Land of Eam. It's 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 great. E E M. E E M. All yeah, right. It, I'm it, definitely gonna check it out. It was a it was a backer uh, kit campaign that I backed. Oh yeah. Last year in the summer, and so I've been patiently waiting. I I got like all three books, and one of my favorite things Ooh. is that they um they have an actual like campaign setting for it. Like they have a full oh, book that's just the setting, and yeah. Why I love it is I'm I'm not a huge um. I don't like pre-written adventures a lot. Um, Mm. I have some on my shelf for like D&D and I've looked through them and I think like, oh, they're fun to get like ideas, but to actually run one, I don't love it. And so I was was a little nervous with that until I actually got like the PDFs of the book. And it's like, Mm. oh, it's like, here here are rumors here are random little quests oh. here is just like here's some um notes on an npc here's some notes on a location here's just some ideas and random encounters and things like that it's like wait a yeah. minute you're like exactly what i want <laughs> yeah <laughs> see that's so good i find often like with campaign settings they can be so um bloated and, and yeah. like hard to read and, yeah. and you know that's why i've always sort of gravitated away from campaign settings and just sort of homebrewed my own stuff but mm-hmm. like when it's in that sort of format i can absolutely see the value yeah. in that that's so good right just it's to have fantastic. it sort of stripped back and you've got mm-hmm. just these rumors and all of the stuff you can actually use yeah and th- there's like a whole section where it's like this bridge that's like uh that's uh run by one of the the main trolls in the world and all of that or in the lands yeah. and it's basically like a bunch of prompts of like here's what the like the troll believes in the old troll ways and like doesn't let people through so it's like you got to take the yeah. tolls and all of that it's yeah, like super yeah. goofy where it's like it just gives you the prompts where it's like oh if you try and pass this bridge the troll is going to try and kill you it's not like that it's, yeah it's actual motivations behind this like creature behind this yeah. person which i love because i mean again i haven't run too many uh D campaign uh you know pre pre-written stuff but yeah. what really resonated with me in Land of Eam is the fact that the they set out the NPCs with giving them actual like motivations and like like traits yeah. and aspects that you can yeah. then interpret in your own way, which is why I was saying that in with a uh, cardiograph is that I love when you keep it open like that, where it's like this this 
you could have fiery as a trait and depending on what the what the what it's connected to (laughs) yeah yeah and the other traits that may also be connected that could be way different interpretations like is it actually on fire is the person like (laughs) is the person like a maybe maybe they're a spitfire or maybe they have a fiery personality or maybe they are fiery themselves like there's 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 a few yeah. ways that you can interpret that depending on Absolutely. the situation so that's that's why yeah. i really loved it in cardiograph when we were talking about that I adore yeah it. <laughs> thank you yeah I, I found it's like such a good particularly for like solo role playing when you don't have all of these other people to sort of riff off mm-hmm. of um and, and you know but, but when you're solo and you have these like terms that are able to just sort of spark your creativity, because that, ultimately that's what, what it is, is you're yeah. just sort of sitting down playing this game as a way to sort of be creative. Yeah, creative and outlet. I think that's a creative outlet, yeah. And it's certainly true in group role-playing games, but it's particularly true in solo, I, I think. Um, and so having these like terms that you can just use as a single thing that sparks your imagination, it just means that like you've got endless replayability and all mm-hmm. of the world you're going to do is still organically you you're not reading this passage like yeah. this forest is like this it's mm-hmm. like instead what is this forest like it's like these vague descriptors and mm-hmm. how do you interpret that it's different every time you know yeah and they're good descriptor words too for even because i i love the approach as well with describing in games and and i'm i'm, I'm not great at describing in games even as a gm it's one of my mm. weaknesses that i'm trying to get better at <laughs> Um, yeah, but I saw something on threads and, and this kind of inspired me a little bit here is that if you just let's say you play cartograph and, you know, you go through the whole thing and you come to that forest, you know, it's description like it's lively and you can use those as the descriptive of the forest. Like you don't have to get into yeah. like all of these different things you can use lively. It's lively. Full of, there's there's creature creatures and critters and all kinds of things around and you can yeah. use it to help you. You, with your descriptions versus like um this forest is uh there's there's like uh deer here and stuff like that yeah like you can give yeah you more direction exactly yeah absolutely so actually i'm i'm really curious too because you, you mentioned uh quite a bit you know that you've you've play tested uh cartograph a lot which it's fantastic. I would imagine you would do that a bunch as a game designer because it's like, I need yeah. to make sure I get this down. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I'd love to hear about some of your playthroughs of Cartograph. You know, how how have some oh, of them yeah. gone? Like, what, what kind of worlds have you built? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Let me let's see if yeah. I can find some of my old logs here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So recently, <laughs> my, my wife and I did um, a playtest um together so i've sort of i've got a couple of rules in the new edition mm-hmm. coming out where if you don't want to have it as a solo experience yeah. you can play it as like a two-player game or a group game still love it um so you know maybe you're a company of cartographers going to this new land or something like that <laughs> um, but we were just sort of playing as two cartographers and we ended up finding this like warmongering people mm-hmm. that um their entire civilization was divided by this river that sort of yeah. were cut through the continent um and there was like these religious folk that would use the river as like a um, nomadic kind of spiritual journey so they would Ooh. start at the top of the river mm-hmm. um and it they did it every single time one of their tribesmen died. So they'd yeah. go to the top of the river, they'd make a raft, and they'd put the dead person on the raft, and they'd all journey down this river. Um, That's so cool. As, as their sort of send off to the person, and all throughout mm-hmm. their journey, they'd you know pay tributes, they'd leave things on the on the raft and everything, and eventually the raft would open out into the sea, and they'd let the raft go, kind of like a big long extended Viking send off. Yeah. Um, and, and there was a lot of conflict because these tribal people, they were kind of like controlling the river and mm-hmm. they were stopping these warmongering people from evading all of these other people on the other side of the continent mm-hmm. so as cartographers we were trying to be so diplomatic would go to like the warmongering <laughs> people's like town and they'd be like you need to go and like kill these people for us and allow us to get across the river and we're like ah, we're just cartographers <laughs> we're just trying to like see what's on that mountain over there like yeah, i know how on. to draw a map i don't know what you <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so that was a really fun one because the land was kind of uh, there was all of this tension sort of yeah. everywhere we went we were kind of like we don't want to like get Get involved in this big conflict and so that was a really fun world but we didn't end up sort of um, running anything else in it afterwards mm-hmm. no but um, that sounds like but that there shows some of the creativity that and and some of the actual like world that can be built it's so easy to be like you know here's examples of, of different things that you could find but giving an actual example here's what i here's a playthrough that i did and here's yeah you know, a world that we were in and showing like yeah a map making game may look like okay how do you actually create a world from that it happens you just got like yeah you have to play through it you have to experience it you have to 
know, play through it to the point where it's like, oh, wait, now I have a world. When did that happen? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's sort of, that was definitely the aim that I sort of wanted. I didn't, mm -hmm. because I came from that point where I was like, I don't want to draw a world map. I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and having to gamify it, I, I needed to make sure that the game was going to be well, fun enough to play, but also allowed you to do that world building in a way that seemed like unintrusive and, and, and intuitive almost. I wanted mm -hmm. the the world to emerge from your experience rather than you sitting down and actually like planning it out. Yeah. And I think that's what solo games tend to do really, really well. Like I played this solo game for a while called Iron Sworn. Oh, yes. I love Iron Sworn. I haven't played it, but Iron I've been Sworn dying to do some stuff with it because it's, it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I love yeah, it. yeah, it's fantastic. It was my first introduction to PBTA um, style games, and oh. and I really, really loved Iron Swan as well. And and it just did that same kind of thing where you were sort mm -hmm. of playing, and you were just going through the procedure of being this character and stuff. But all this world building emerged because of the way that you played, the people yeah. that you interacted with, and and it didn't feel like a laborious thing that you had to do on top of the game. It was just mm -hmm. this thing that emerged from it as and you it played. Does, and it didn't like, st and it doesn't stick you in like here is how the world is and then you get to play in that world yeah like, you do get that freedom of interpreting it in your own ways which is something i love about iron sworn there's a lot of things i love about iron sworn the moves are really cool <laughs> yeah um oh yeah <laughs> I, I i love how th there i love that there are so many like i've played I've played quite a few Powered by the Apocalypse games, and usually, like, they try and yeah. keep the moves down to a specific amount, you know, try and keep it easy, yeah. unless it's your own personal moves. But for Iron Sworn, there are just so many in there, and I love how they can be relevant for different situations, and you don't always have to use them, because you, yeah. you can resolve it however you feel, but if you are stuck and need help and be like, you know, what does happen next, you have the ability to be like, all right, you know, um, I'm I'm taking a journey, what conflict can happen, and be able to roll a move yeah. that high straight into that i love it absolutely <laughs> yeah it's such a well thought out way to sort of have that solo experience you know it really is um so many times you get stuck and just not know what to do but if you've got the tools there to sort of perpetuate it you never get bogged down in the mm -hmm. in the game you know which i think is something that i find in D and D. I i find D and D sometimes the systems that are in place that you need to use to play mm -hmm. they get in the way of the playing in a way almost mm -hmm. like like the story and the experience you're having they're hindered by the rules rather than facilitated by them yep especially you know, if you're so many times to, yeah it's it's difficult especially if you're trying to do a more narrative approach to a game like i know there's yeah. a lot of times when i ran my D, D game where it's like you know i want to i am more than happy for a combat to resolve narratively but then it's like okay you you hit that person now we have to actually enter into combat and deal yeah. with all these rules and have to go through the systems and combat in D, &D sucks i'll say that I, I, it's it sucks because it takes so <laughs> long and there's been ways that i've changed it um hmm. by actually using versions of older games like the side initiative yeah. like instead of having everyone roll their own initiatives it's like okay the players roll and monsters roll and they take turns they like go back and forth yeah. like that and like there's ways that you could simplify it the, like and and D, &D again 5e i i have no ill feelings about it i know that people love it for different reasons but i think a yeah. common problem a lot of people have is combat um yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's no i totally it's, agree with you it's so interesting uh but i i actually yeah. am really curious um because you were mm. especially with adding in more rules and stuff like that i'm, I'm curious yeah. if there's ever been a point so far with uh developing cart uh <laughs> cardiograph um if you've come to a point where you had to kill a mechanic or an aspect of the game that ended up not working mm -hmm. well mm, yeah okay there was like in the sort of solo sphere, there's sort of like, uh, there's like journaling games and then there's like non-authoring games yeah. that you don't do any journaling. And there's like a lot of people that just avoid journaling games and there's a lot of people that only play journaling games. Yep. It's kind of like one of the main divisions I've seen. Depends on their style and, and all that. It depends on their style, yeah. And so early on, I was sort of like, I wanted to combine them. I wanted to sort of be like, you could do authoring, you could mm. not do authoring. Um, but in order to do that, I sort of needed like a, a more traditional approach to like resolution mechanics yeah. rather than you just sitting and writing down. So like I had this idea um, where you could sort of use 
the value and your disposition and like various other tags um, that you would acquire through your journey and they would modify your dice rolls. Mm -hmm. So you could do a dice roll to sort of try and achieve something. And then depending on how many tags that you had that would help the situation, you could add an extra die to your die pool okay, or, yeah. or the inverse sort of thing. Um, and so that sort of resolution mechanic, it was like fun, but mm -hmm. it ended up just sort of being too... Um, I had to rework too much of the other systems to sort of facilitate it. Mm -hmm. And it sort of started drifting away from the, the core idea of this map making game yeah. um, where that was the focus. And instead it sort of became more of a, a cartographer going out and adventuring where I still want mm -hmm. cartog cartograph to be about the map, right? That's you're still a cartographer, but the, the game is about the map. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I've kind <laughs> of, I haven't totally removed that mechanic. I've instead just sort of like modified it and sort of, you know, shrunk it down a bit and mm -hmm. I put it in like a, an optional section in the book. So mm -hmm. if you're sort of looking for a, a role playing game that you don't and you don't like authoring, you don't want to have to sit there and do creative writing, mm -hmm. you can implement this sort of rule set to sort of, you know, do skill checks yeah. and overcome problems and all that kind of stuff without having to write in your journal. Um, so it's not entirely scrapped that it's like modified it and then mm -hmm. booted it out to the like uh, section of the rule book that's like, yeah, you don't have optional. to do this part if you don't want. <laughs> optional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what what, but a, what a great section. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I do really like those sort of sections because it allows you to sort of play how you want. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Iron Swan has like an optional rules section yeah, in Blades like, so in the Dark too. In introducing just some other ideas. Like I, I think yeah. they're, they're great, but if you're playing the game for the first time, usually you shouldn't, you, you should play the game normal and then try and yeah. play with some things that are different because it, it yeah. can be a lot to be like, all right, yeah, let's play Iron Sworn for the first time, but let's play this with this weird rule that's all the way in the back of the book that no one yeah. <laughs> knew about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I, I love that. And it's, it's always interesting to hear, you know, the journey of trying to, um, you know, work through how the mechanics of a game is going to work and, you know, yeah. the different ideas that people will try and pitch basically for themselves. Like, all right, yeah, let's yeah. try this resolution mechanic and see what goes on with it and all of that. So yeah. I, I, I really love that. And one of my favorite things that I actually learned from, from doing this podcast is killing your darlings and knowing when to do it and, and how it's going to yeah. create a better game. And so, yeah. I, I love that, especially knowing your vision of the game, the fact that, you know, you want the, the game is about the map, not about yeah. adventuring throughout this new land, because there's plenty of other games that can do that itself. Exactly. This is about yeah. the map and knowing that, you know, any rule, anything that you're going to have within the main game has to support that idea. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. That was like a big learning curve that I had in, in the design process because Cartograph was like, besides the one game jam that I entered, which was like a one page RPG jam, mm -hmm. I had never really made um, a role playing game before. Yeah, I'd done like a bit that. of video games and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was my first one. And <clears throat> it was like really difficult at first because I just, at first, you know, I didn't even know where to start. I knew what <laughs> I wanted to do, but I was like, how do I actually mechanize this yeah. <laughs> in a way that's, that's, that's fun? Um, but yeah, it was such a learning process to realize I had to, you know, cut things out. I had to refine everything mm -hmm. and make sure that, like, the game facilitated the vision that it was trying to achieve. Um, and it's definitely something that I've taken into the future games that I've made as well. It was definitely a really formative experience for me mm -hmm. making Cartograph. And I'm hoping that this Atlas edition is like the the magnum opus, the sort of the yeah. game that I've <clears throat> started with. And now I've sort of refined now that I've designed a few more games and got a few more things under my belt. I love that. And, and that's cool as well as the sentiment to it with it being your first game and all of that, where it's like, yeah. you know, you're, you're working up to making this yeah, Magnum Opus, like it, it is this ultimate version. And I'm, I'm yeah. actually super curious of like, are there going to be any like big changes um, coming to the Atlas version compared to the original that you posted or that you um, finished a few years ago? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think like the main thing that has changed is the... Uh, the explanations and stuff that I've done mm -hmm. in the books. I've done a lot of like rewriting of things and, and I, every single time I get a piece of feedback from the game where they're like, really love the game. I was confused about this rule. Mm -hmm. I've just gone through like every bit of feedback that I've found <laughs> from anybody and just been like, okay, so if someone found this rule confusing. How can I like make sure that nobody finds this rule confusing yeah. ever again? <laughs> and Absolutely. so gone in and just like, I've got like a definition list now and just a bunch of stuff that's hopefully going to make the game mm -hmm. a seamless experience. You can find everything you need in the game. You don't need to, um, be confused about anything hopefully and, and i've also just sort of like doubled all of the prompts because i wanted mm -hmm. it to sort of be like more variety in the different places you could find and more replayability and um 
yeah and all of the rules to sort of supplement having multiple people play mm -hmm. there was a there's a friend of ours her name is ag winters she um, runs a, a live stream here in australia really fantastic actual play um and she did like a world building series where she played through um, Cartograph with her yeah. viewers on, on stream. And it was really, really cool. So she had like five different characters. She was sort of running at the one time and you could type in chat what you want one particular character to do. And oh, it was such a brilliant cool. idea. Um, and she had like the map that she was drawing and the, the whole, all of the chat sort of helped like go through the world. And, mm -hmm. and it was such a cool experience to see someone a playing my game but also <laughs> just see her like interpret it in a different way mm -hmm. to facilitate the type of game she wanted to play so i was like i need to make sure that i facilitate rules for group play because yeah. like, it seemed like so much fun um so i've added that in there as well and, and just yeah a lot of tweaks and refinements nothing mm -hmm. that's been like a major overhaul though because i think that um the core of the game does what it set out to do mm -hmm. well um you know so i was happy with it and i didn't really want to mess with it too much yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's my baby, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Maybe to my hindrance, who knows? Maybe there yeah. are parts that I don't know about that it should have reworked, but I guess I'll find out. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think that's the thing as well is is it's it's difficult to as as a creative to always be a hundred percent like satisfied as well with like the final product. Yeah. Whereas like there's always something else that could be changed. There's always something else that could be different, and so there's probably yeah, yeah maybe maybe even the final version with the atlas may not be the you know, absolute final version that you are 100% happy with because there may be something that comes later where it's like, no, I didn't yeah. change that and I wish I would have worked yeah. it differently. But that's what other printings are for. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Different editions, you know. I, I do have this like far off vision of maybe having like a, a thicker sort of tome that facilitates different genres. So we, Ooh, could, we yeah. could have like the sci-fi genre or we could have, you know, a horror genre and it's just got all of the prompts. A post-apocalyptic by... genre would be really fun Ooh, too. Yeah, yeah. Like mapping a wasteland yeah. sort of thing. That's a good idea. Especially yeah. especially like generation like like generations down, you know, the apocalypse happened here, but you know, several generations of people have lived and maybe yeah. you're someone who have found this place, you know, new land after all of this has happened what happened here what's the history here yeah the people? yeah that would be fun <laughs> that would be cool lead some more explanations about the apocalypse itself yeah, and stuff too exactly yeah that's a good idea <laughs> this uh, that so that's what I, I i'd love the idea of that you know yeah. a, a large thick tome that's just got all the tables you need and mm -hmm. any kind of genre you'd want to play like that that sounds really really cool but yeah no i that, i think that's a lot amazing. of work and <laughs> Yeah, this is true. I got other things I want to do too. I got to <laughs> prioritize my projects because it's just too many. <laughs> yeah, I, I am curious though if you do have any. I, you know, I know that you've mentioned some of your other games, but I'm curious if you have mm. any other projects that you are um, thinking about for the future that maybe people can look mm. forward to. Yeah, true. That's a good question too. <laughs> um, you're full of good questions. <laughs> uh, there's one that I've been working on uh, lately. And it's called Alpha Directive, and it's a it's sort of a far flung dying earth sci fi mm -hmm. role playing game, um, not a solo one, just a proper one. <laughs> um, and it's sort of it's taking the idea of being an android or a robot or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you used to be a human, and your consciousness has sort of been moved into this um, mechanical form. Uh, but yeah. you, you've been alive for so long that all of the systems are deteriorating and you don't really remember who you are. Um, so one of the core like mechanisms in it is like trying to um, like recover corrupted memories and things like that to try yeah. and learn who you are and, and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, it, that's one that I've been working on. That's probably like the biggest one that I've been working that's on really cool. lately. I like that a lot. Yeah. You can also dip into oh, some thanks. really messed up horror there too. <laughs> Of like yeah, living for absolutely. that long and and people even being stuck in 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 robot bodies that maybe didn't yeah. want that like they're ooh. exactly yeah it's sort of and I really I like, like um I like really weird sci-fi that has like uh I don't know my friend Nicholas and I coined it viscera punk um so it's kind of the idea of like incorporating organic um with the metal so yeah. in, in alpha directive there's like this one city um called palisade prominence that mm -hmm. everybody sort of lives in and everywhere else is a desolate wasteland <laughs> and the city itself it, it's powered by like organs and, mm -hmm. and and like flesh and that kind of stuff so Ooh. there's like an enormous heart beneath the city mm -hmm. that's like pumping blood that fuels everything and like all of the subway systems are like the peristalsis of an intestine tract that sounds like something you would thing. see in a doctor who episode <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I does, love isn't that. It? I, I, I'm a huge fan of Doctor Who. I dig that. <laughs> That's yeah, really cool. Yeah, me too. Doctor Who's great. <laughs> Who's your favorite Doctor? Oh God. Um... <laughs> Uh, difficult question um yeah, so yeah. I, I'll, I'll be honest i've only watched uh 9 10 11 and only parts of 12 because we didn't have hbo for a while and we were we were, we were like re-watching it and all of that yeah oh yeah. man i mean i i'm a huge I'm, I'm a huge fan of all of them that i've seen but i do really like uh 11 and 12 i think really do yeah. i i mean i love david Tennant. i love the tenth doctor a bunch but 11 and 12 definitely you know peter capaldi and uh matt smith yeah I, yeah I i really liked what they did in their seasons and i really liked some of the stories that they did and it's just also yeah. great because i especially as someone who's a huge fan of monster of the week uh, specifically you know the game not necessarily the genre but i do like yeah. the genre it was really fun to be watching that while running my own monster of the week game and being able to yeah. like catch the tropes and stuff like oh man that's really yeah. cool but yeah no I, I i'm a huge fan of of matt smith and peter capaldi they're great and and david yeah smith too. nice <laughs> Yeah, David Tennant's my favorite. He's yeah. sort of the one that I grew up watching a lot of. So yeah. I just have like this nostalgic sort of love for him. Yeah, I, I was when we watched it for the first time, I was a huge fan of David Tennant. I mean, I still am. And like when he uh when 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 he died and then you know the next doctor came up um i yeah. basically refused to watch anymore <laughs> i refused to watch any of matt smith's season because i'm like i was a super big fan of david Tennant. it's gonna be new and then like yeah. recently when we were rewatching it i actually gave it a chance i'm like oh wait this is actually really fun <laughs> yeah, I, like yeah. Matt style. I like his style it's really great <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think that was like a common sentiment. I know my mom, she was a massive fan of David Tennant too, and she did the same thing. She was yeah. like, I'm not watching Matt Smith. No way he's going to be able to fill those shoes. <laughs> and, and that's the fun thing is that they fill the shoes in different ways. And so you do get just, yeah. I mean, we're, we're talking about interpretations and different interpretations. You get different interpretations of the doctor. You get different ways that people, yeah. you know, decide to depict him and, and decide how to embody him. And I think it's just really, exactly. it's a genius idea for a show because it's like, you know, it's the same character, but there's just so many different versions of him that you can experience. Yeah, it's it really is. I yeah it. <laughs> yeah it's such a good show the world building in that is very cool too oh yeah for sure i like man it's good i'm excited to watch it again uh but <laughs> making me want to watch it again i know now, <laughs> infectious um but no yeah. absolutely i think though we're probably getting close to the end here um i'm i'm trying to uh, what what I would actually there is a question that I thought of before we we sat down to record this uh, that mm. that I was curious of what your answer would be and I mean we've we've kind of talked about how it does um, stand out but from your words specifically how does cardiograph stand out compared to other map making games out there you know there's big ones like the quiet ear and microscope mm. how does it stand out yeah. and you know how how basically almost like a little bit of an elevator pitch how does it stand out and how is it yeah unique sure everything else yeah yeah okay oh putting me on the spot let's see how <laughs> i do uh i think like the thing that's unique about cartograph is um a you get the artifact at the end and it's an artifact you can sort of directly use it's not like um you know like Take microscope for example you do get this plethora of information and history mm -hmm. and stuff but there is work involved in translating that into something that you can use tangibly in another group setting ttrpg mm -hmm. whereas if you are like a, a gm or something and you want to homebrew your own world if you sit down and you play one session of cartograph you can literally just take the the work you've done in cartograph the map you've made the journal you've written and hand that to your players or use that directly in your games and, and you don't have to do any anything else right mm -hmm. um so I think the thing that stands it apart is if if you're a GM and you want to do some world building, you can just use this tool and it's directly going to help you world build and yeah. it's going to give you these artifacts that you can use afterwards. Um, and I think it's just yeah, it's just a a great tool to use for that sort of thing. Oh, that's so cool. And and something I think I would like to add on to that that I think speaks to me a little bit is the fact that you mm. can experience your own world building. Like when you're writing yeah. it down, like you're creating a campaign and you're like, all right, you know, this is what this continent's going to be like. You can write down what it is like, but it's different to experience it. 
in that time, yeah. you know, in that lead up, because, hey, maybe this is, yeah, maybe you are, you are, you are building the, yeah, yeah, you are, <laughs> you are making this map in a time that's a hundred years before this campaign starts. What was it like yeah. then? And being able to actually experience that and, and have a even more of that connection to it because, yeah. you know, writing is writing it out like that is fun and creating that story yourself is fun, but being able to like play through it, I think is its own charm and its own, like, I, I just think that's a really fun idea and i just love that really yeah really really much. yeah that's <laughs> a good point that's a really good point it's kind of that that trope of of how the artist can never really like experience their own work mm -hmm. from like an objective standpoint yeah. because they they were there through the whole process yeah. of creating it and, like you know you write a song but you can never experience what it's like to hear it in its mm -hmm. full form for its final time yeah because you had to go through every ever. every single part you had to go through the bad and, and yeah. the good and, and the frustration and all of that and sometimes exactly. the final product can feel a little tainted because it or not tainted but like where it's like man i put all this work in and it's like it's still good but yeah there is nothing quite like experiencing like someone else's you know music or anything like that but if you yeah, can actually right. go through the process in a way that's fun and a game you know like you get to build yeah. your world as a game you get to you get to actually play someone who can then become a character in that game too like even better that's yeah. so fun i love it yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. I definitely think that that's probably what I should have done with my elevator pitches, <laughs> something like that. You did a better job than me. <laughs> no, I, I still, no, I still think you did great though. And that's the thing. That's, that's what I, that's what I love about being able to talk with people too, is it's a great way to even bounce ideas and, and, and narrow yeah. that down more, like narrow that elevator pitch down, narrow down that focus and things like that. Yeah. It's the game yeah. about, the game is about the map and, and, you know, I've I've definitely had many times where I've I've had ideas and 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 was able to like piece together information even about my own show. Like, even it's focused yeah. through talking with people and being like even hearing their feedback on it and how they think about it. And so, you know, I I always love to give my feedback on the games, especially when I'm talking to the designers, yeah. because it's like I can tell you how I'm viewing it in my mind as you're telling me these things i can tell you how it's sticking with me it's sticking with me that you can play yeah. through your own world because that's just super unique and yeah i love it <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely it's one of the great things about actually having these conversations and that kind yeah. of stuff and, and it's I've, I've had such a good time because it's just one of my massive passions and just to be able to sit down and like have a conversation yes, with someone about same. for like an hour and a half <laughs> again so good i can see why you started the podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it all it all started with I I couldn't stop talking about them, and I I my mom was like, <laughs> it, it was terrible. We were on a we were on a, a vacation or not vacation, but we were going up uh, to Ohio to visit some family, and then we were coming yeah. back down, and I was like super getting into the TTRPGs at the time, and I couldn't stop talking about them, and that was around the time I backed Land of Beam, so you know it was crazy. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> And I wouldn't stop talking about them along with like the campaign I was running and all of these things. And she, and my mom was like, I love you, but you need to start a <laughs> podcast <laughs> because like, I, I, I can't do this with you. Cause like, I love neither, that. neither of my, like my mom's a huge, like animal nerd. My, my dad was like a far, like, like super into like farming and all of these things. So like neither of them were yeah. super big nerds. Um, like really yeah. the only outlets that I had were my siblings and some friends. And so it's like, actually, a podcast is a good idea, and here we I are love now. That you just started it. <laughs> that is so good. You just like, yeah, I could do that. I'm start yeah. a podcast. <laughs> and then it's like, oh wait, I can start a podcast where I can focus it all around finding new games, like finding out about new games, and not have to like, yeah, <laughs> like what better? <laughs> and then I can even help other people too. Like it all just builds yeah. on itself, and it's like, okay, this is the best job ever. <laughs> Yeah, that is fantastic. Absolutely. I love it. And actually, it, it's funny because you were mentioning how, like, you know, you started with TTRPG dice and now you're a game designer. It's like, because <laughs> yeah. I did the same thing. I was a dice maker. And it's like, oh, it's, really? It's, yeah, it's the pipeline. <laughs> it's the pipeline. It's Absolutely. The pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> And I love as well, earlier you were mentioning that you hadn't made a game yet. And you mm -hmm. said yet. So I'm, I'm waiting for your game to come out. Oh, it's yeah. It's, it's, 
there are potential ideas there 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 are thoughts that have ha- that have popped up when it's like oh this would be an interesting idea for a campaign and then it's like i don't actually don't know what's what game would work hold on and like it, it's, yeah. it's 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 there again it's the pipeline you know you start getting exactly. into the ttrpgs and then you start making your own games and then suddenly you're a game yeah. designer it's like oh wait what happened how did i get here <laughs> how did i get here yeah <laughs> exactly oh man well if you ever make a game and you need someone to do a proofread i'm happy to yeah absolutely no i'm, I'm very we'll, we'll see what happens i don't know 2024 yeah. is going to be interesting which actually this yeah. episode's actually going to be coming out in 2024 which is a crazy oh, yeah. thought um and so that i is think crazy what we're going to do here is I'm going to say another time, like, hey, guys, um, Cartograph is coming out on Kickstarter on February 6th, which is really exciting. It's going to be the Atlas version, which is the one that we've been talking about, the one that's going to be the magnum opus. You know, it's going to have all of these, yeah. not necessarily changes, but additions to the game to make it more replayable and, and many more options and all of that, which I'm super excited about. And this episode should be coming out uh, late January. Uh, which is again crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's going to be about a week. It's uh, the, bleh, 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 sorry. The Kickstarter is going to be coming out in about a week after this episode. So if you guys want to check it out, the link t- to the Kickstarter page is going to be in the description of this episode. Just head on over to it. Click notify me at launch so that you can get notified and just check out the game on itch even as well. The previous versions just to get a taste of it too. And all of that fun stuff because yeah, we're going into 2024 and you deserve new fun games. And so why not back games early and all that cool stuff. And so I think there's a, (laughs) there's a few questions that, um, you know, we are starting to get wrapped up a bit here, but I'd like to ask, um, for the Kickstarter, is there a uh, do you have a delivery date kind of estimated around when it's going to be uh, like done and people are going to get their games? Um, so we're sort of aiming for at the latest uh, August okay. 2024. Um, so we're as part of the uh, deluxe edition that we're doing mm-hmm. the deluxe pledge that you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife and I are still doing some dice making and stuff we're making some custom dice that you can use Ooh, for the game um, but obviously we hand make them and you would know being a dice maker yeah. how long that takes so, <laughs> oh for sure um, we, yeah <laughs> the polishing oh my god my wrists um but, give your yeah, arms a so break <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> so because we're doing that we're sort of, we're limiting the number um to make sure that we don't get flooded mm-hmm. with having to make a million dice and everything but to make sure we have enough time to do all those dice and stuff mm-hmm. august is sort of the date that we're gonna aim for as yeah. the latest Actually, I'd love to know what what what's fully going to be in the deluxe edition. I know that you've mentioned the cards Ooh, and the dice yeah. and and what's else. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, cards. Uh, we're going to do a set of dice. We're gonna. My dad's a woodworker, so he's going to um, make some custom like red gum dice boxes Ooh, that you get. So yeah. a really nice luxury sort of case to keep your dice in, as well as a um, journal that's going to have like the character sheet printed on the front cover and stuff. So oh, it's that's gorgeous. Yeah. Your journaling. Um, uh, there was something else was there or is that it <laughs> if you need to dice, check dice if you need to check journal. you you are all good to do that too <laughs> i think that's it and then obviously the book itself mm-hmm. and the pdf yeah, yeah so uh, uh, roughly how long is the book going to be <laughs> uh the book is um at the moment it's sitting at 85 pages mm-hmm. and um it's going to be anywhere between like 180 depending on whether i add more stuff or a couple of stuff <laughs> out, but yeah something around there in, in that area and so about how uh because i know that there's a lot of people who you know there's different uh processes through you and uh, kickstarters i know there's people that go into the kickstarter with the book 100 percent done i know there's people that go yeah. into the kickstarters where they have like a beta of it done and then they write it through uh what yeah. what is your approach for this um i i definitely going to try and have the book done like mm-hmm. I, i'm sort of getting it wrapped up ideally before the end of the mm-hmm. year so by 2024 it should be sort of in its final state and then mm-hmm. a, a couple of months for editing and stuff um but yeah, I've only ever done like one other Kickstarter and it was a very stressful experience and it definitely <laughs> um, made me realize I want to have as much stuff done before the launch as possible. Oh, for and sure. And I think because, you know, uh, the, I want to make sure that the game's done for my own sake as well. Like mm-hmm. even if the Kickstarter doesn't fund, I'm going to write this game and finish it. So yeah. if I just get it done before the Kickstarter, less stress <laughs> for me. You know? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I love yeah. it. Perfect. No, this is great. Cause I, I always love asking those questions, especially with games that are coming to Kickstarter. Um, you know, Kickstarter yeah. isn't like you're 
isn't just you're buying the game and then you're guaranteed to receive it. It's always going to be yeah. you know, investing in this in this project. And so I always think trying to an- uh, ask some questions and see what the person already has planned, what their plans are, and what people can even expect from the whole project, I think is always fantastic. Yeah. So thank you for answering those. Uh- <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, though, uh, I'm going... Probably, I think one last question I have here before we fully wrap up, and it's All right. what are you the most excited for with this whole Kickstarter and actually, you know, finishing this Atlas di- uh, Atlas edition of Cartograph? What What are you hmm. the most excited for? Oh, that's a good question too. Um, I think when I in the first edition of Cartograph, I, I got physical copies. Um, eventually like printed Mm -hmm. self-published um and that was like a really another really surreal experience when i had finished this game and then i like held a physical copy in my hands and i was like whoa i made a book so i think like when we get our like shipment in from from the printers of Mm -hmm. the physical copies of the book just opening that and like holding that in my hand is going to be like a really cool experience to Uh, see you know a tangible thing that i've made um and then uh, leading on from that seeing it in other people's hands that's mm-hmm. going to be amazing too that's just going to be that same surreal experience of like wow you know however many people have a copy of my mm-hmm. game that's <laughs> so cool <laughs> i you know I fingers it. crossed if it all goes well <laughs> <laughs> yes if it all co- goes well which um hey listeners that is your responsibility for it to all go well <laughs> Um, you, know, you just listen to this basic uh hour and a half pitch of this game and i am i <laughs> But in, in seriousness, I, I think that you guys should definitely go and check this game out. I definitely know that I'm going to, even though um, I don't have the most TTRPG budget right now, which is very sad because I just want to add more <laughs> games to my shelf. Um, I definitely am going to be looking at it because I am so down for this whole idea for it. And I'm just very, very excited. And if you guys are interested, especially to experience your own world building and gamify it so that it's more fun for you please go check it out again in the link of this episode it will be in the links it will be in the description of this episode there we go <laughs> it's, it's starting to get late <laughs> and brain's going a little fried right now uh but oh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, um, Brandon, thank you so much for coming on and talking about Cartograph with me. This is absolutely fantastic. I'm really, really excited for the project, and I'm really excited for this to release. And even though, again, like uh, 2024, bleh, that's something to look forward to at least. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm very. Well, thank you for having me, Willow. It's yeah. been amazing. It's been such a good time talking to you. Oh, I'm so glad. And maybe, and hopefully, we can do Basin, which will be very yeah. exciting because I have been loving that game for like a year now i read it um we're, we're in florida and, and when we got hit by hurricane ian like we had like no power mm. and then like uh power for like the first day then like no internet for like a week and so that was like oh, my rough. saving grace game is that i was yeah reading it, i was reading through it throughout the whole time that there's no internet and then it's like man this game is great and i trauma bonded yeah. to it basically like <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> good game to trauma bond to i know right it's it's beautiful and i i would love to do that so we'll definitely talk about that more so if you guys enjoyed brandon yeah. in this episode maybe he'll be in a future one who knows we'll see yeah. ideally yes um but yeah <laughs> i think we are going to end it here so thank you so much everyone for listening and thank you so much brandon for coming on and uh goodbye <laughs> bye bye <laughs>